Green River is one of those things that, that growing up is just second nature. We used to spend all summer down there as far as uh, swimming, fishing, camping. Uh, it was just a way of life. It provides a playground for my five-year-old twins. And we come down here and we spend the day. We may only cover a small section of the green, but we will be finding mussels and crayfish. And we'll go fishing and we'll go swimming. And it's all the things that you would hope your children have the opportunity to experience. Green River is tourism uh, to Greensburg and Green County. We have a, just a ton of people that come in and go fishing, you know, float the river, kayak, canoe. Uh, it, it's meant everything to us as far as from a tourism standpoint. We have a lot of recreational youth on the Green River within Mammoth Cave National Park. On a busy summer or Saturday afternoon, we might have 200 or more canoes out on the Green River. We have communities up and down the Green River watershed that rely on the Green River and the lakes associated with that Green River for the water supply. Well, the Green River, from a uh, biological standpoint, is probably one of the richest tributaries of the Ohio River system. So the more that we do to protect this river corridor, to improve management practices along there, the better the water quality will be for nature and for people. Today we're right here at 300 Springs. It's right on the edge of our Davis Bend Preserve, a brand new preserve where we're developing our education facilities and our project office. And this really typifies sort of the karst topography here in central Kentucky where you have the karst limestone, porous, the water drains, and it pours out of these springs at the very top and into the Green River. And the Green River, of course, is one of our most biologically rich streams in the nation, where we're, we're putting together a corridor conservation project that will span from the Green River Lake Dam, 100 miles all the way to Mammoth Cave, working with private landowners and agencies up and down trying to protect this valuable asset for Kentucky. It really is sort of the artery that flows through central Kentucky and supports our agricultural and industries and communities. And so all of this, nature, people, the economy, all works together. And here we have sort of the crown jewel of it all, uh, 300 Springs. The natural flows of rivers have been highly impacted by putting dams and structures on the river. And to the flows of the river and how those dams regulate the release and capture of water, is that impacting have a negative impact on the watershed itself? Well, the Sustainable Rivers Project actually began in fall of 1998 when some Nature Conservancy staff contacted our offices. Uh, we had a meeting, so they asked us if we might be able to change the way we operate our lake for ecological benefits. And after some discussion, we said, uh, we believe we can do that fairly easily in the fall. The primary differences are a delayed filling of the lake in the spring, a delayed drawdown in the fall. If we have the lake at summer pool and we have a large storm, we'll pass that water immediately downstream. We try to mimic natural precipitation events. The Lova District recently completed an economic study of the impacts of the Sustainable Rivers Project. We found a positive benefit in the extended recreation season to the marina owners and operators on the lake, and a similar likewise benefit to the canoe livery operators downstream. And we've seen a big difference in the quality of water that we've been able to pull from the Green River since the Nature Conservancy's uh, coordination and work with Corps of Engineers on uh, how the water is let out from the dam. And we don't have near uh, the uh, turbidity issues and things of that nature that, that we did before. That saves us money. I think people should care about mussels because they serve a very important role as, as our natural biological filter feeders in the rivers and streams. Imagine an area the size of a football field in the Green River. That area may have as many as 50,000 of these little mussels that are anywhere from the size of a quarter up to the size of a dinner plate, pumping the water constantly every day, cleaning the water for us um, to be able to remove all those things out of the water that, that could potentially harm us. And uh, a lot of our water, the drinking water sources that go to the treatment plants comes from our rivers and lakes. And this is where these animals are starting to die off at an alarming rate. So what's going on? Uh, these animals are being influenced by toxic chemicals, industrial pollution, uh, things attached to pesticides, herbicides, things like that. And, and they are the canary in the river. They are the ones that we're interested in. They're the indicator species. 
So the more natural we can make this river, the way it was prior to the, being, the dams being in, then we're seeing the result of that now in lots of juvenile mussels being found in these rivers, and, uh, and especially since in the last 10 years when, when these actions have taken place. Mammoth Cave National Park is, is one of the largest tourist attractions in the Commonwealth of Kentucky. Uh, it certainly is a major economic engine uh, for the tourism industry here. We contribute somewhere in the vicinity of $62 million a year to the local economies here, contribute some 525 jobs. We have about 800,000 visitors a year that come to the park. Of that, we take probably about 400,000 of those actually on ranger-led tours inside Mammoth Cave. The Sustainable Rivers Project really improved the water quality and the uh, siltation and other things associated with some of the, 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 the water that does flow through the system here. 